for those on, on their way, Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for what you're going to do today. We bless you, O oh God, because we come with expectancy. Because we know, O oh God, that when you do things, you do it very well. So we praise you today, God, and we lift you up. We glorify your name because you're King of Kings, your Lord of Lords. And we honor you today. We humble ourselves before you. And we come into your courts, we pray. We're giving you thanks, oh God. We want to bless your name because you're good and your mercy is everlasting. We honor you, Jesus. We glorify you, hallelujah. We bless your name, hallelujah. We honor you, King of Kings. We glorify you, Lord of Lords. We sanctify ourselves, oh God, and we come before you. We humble ourselves in your presence. Take full control. Take preeminence of everything. Let everything fall on good ground in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blood can wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of my Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of my Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white and so.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you, Lord, that we can come before your throne of grace, O oh Lord. What a privilege to serve you. What a privilege to worship you in spirit and in truth, O oh Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. So we are still learning the sound system. And as you can see, it's very hot still, but the ACs are working. Praise God. But the Lord provided a place where we can come together. Amen. So what a privilege to serve Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
great change since I was born. Great change since I was born. Yes, great change since I was born. It is a great. Praise the Lord. As we continue and as you can see the offering basket, we just have to do it over here. Like Pastor said, we're getting to learn learn the place. So um, if there's anyone else, you can come now with the offering and bring it and we're going to ask our Reverend Morgan to bless the offering in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Reverend Morgan.
squeeze. Now squeeze. Squeeze tighter, tighter, as tight as you can. <laughs> you know what that is, right? You know what it is. That's me hugging each and every one of you and telling you how much I love you and how nice it is to see each of you here tonight. Father, we want to thank you for this offering that has come up before you. Father, as your servants have given. Father, we know it's not about the money. It's about the heart. And Father, as they have given with a willing heart. And as they have given cheerfully unto you, God. Father, so we ask you tonight to receive from our hands that which has come forth. We ask you to bless it, multiply it, sanctify it for your work and for your service. And Father, we pray that every hand that brought forth tonight and brought forth cheerfully, Father, that they will not lack any good thing. For you know what each and every one of them need before they even ask. And Father, as we're in this house tonight, let this heat remind us of your Shekinah glory. For the Bible says that you are a consuming fire. And God, we can't be cool in the fire. The fire warms us. The fire empowers us. The fire provides light for us. It burns out impurities within us. Father, the fire is powerful and strong. So let our focus not be on the heat tonight. Let it be upon you, the fire. The living fire. Oh God. That burns within our hearts. So we thank you tonight. For your servant. And for everyone tonight. In Christ centered international house. And may our hearts be open. To hear from you tonight. That the Berean people. I pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much Pastor Evan. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. And as you sit, I'm going to get Abigail to come down. We're teaching the children the scriptures. And so she's going to come now and she's going to do for us Psalms 100. Are you ready to get Abigail? And so I am trying by God's grace, Pastor Stephen and I, we're trying to teach her about the Word of God. And I believe it's very good for them so that they learn about the Word of God in an early age. At this time, give me a great privilege to ask Pastor Stephen to come right now. He sat down. As to Steve of the church, the church pastor Steve, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you guys hear me in this one? Praise the Lord. It's 
a little bit sounds interesting. Can you pull it down a little bit, Nikki? Number six, remember? Check, check, one, two. Okay. Can you guys hear me good? Üdvözlök mindenkit a Nazareth Jézus nevében. Welcome everyone in the name of Jesus. Can we just stand one more time? I know it's it's a little hot in here, but I'm going to work on that. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we have the next song, Nikki, for a second? Some volume on it on the side. Thank you. Why we here every week? Because there has been a fresh oasis. We're gonna pray now that God give us understanding today. Amen. Lift up your hands to the Lord. One of us oh, wants to stay We want so much more. Life transforming glory. Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that by your Holy Spirit impart to us understanding, knowledge and wisdom that we may know your perfect will in Jesus' mighty name. Can we just sing this song if you know this song, please? Come. Jesus, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many of you here at the first time 
Can I have some first time visitors? Lift up your hands. Anybody who's here first time. Can you please stand? Yes, you guys too, because last week we were short. Well, everybody's the first time here. Okay, I agree. But first time at Christ Center, House of God. Okay, raise a, give them a hand. God bless you in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you for being with us. I believe that you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. And next uh, week, by the grace of God, we're going to have a gift for you prepared. Amen. Uh, Nikki, turn it down a little bit. Thank you. Now, last week, uh, as you can see, we were in a smaller place. And uh, at the end of the meeting, you know, we had uh, some prayer for people. And there was some testimony. Um, what's your name again in the back? That lady, right there. Nyanavet. Naked, naked. Nem neki, nem neki. Neki. Naked, naked. Zoli mögött. Marika, Marika. Marika, Marika. Megkélek téged, kijönnél, hogy elmond nekünk, hogy mi történt? A múlt héten? Gyere nyugodtan. Az úgy dicsőségére, oké? Okay? Mondd nekünk, hogy mit tapasztaltál meg, amikor a, az alkalom végén imádkoztam érted. fell down Okay. okay so she still have some pain in her back but at that time she said that she had no pain Emlékszem, mutatta, hogy nem volt fájdalmad akkor múlt akkor héten. Igen, igen. De akkor nem. Akkor nem volt fájdalmad. Oké, okay. uh, akkor imádkozunk érted, jó? Imádkozunk érted, hogy teljesen állni az a fájdalmad, jó? Imádkozunk érted most? Oké. Okay. Norbi, csak gyere, csak kész az érdele, legyél nekem, oké? Okay? Drága, mennyi atyám a Jézus nevében. Köszönöm, hogy God is doing amazing things, amen. And also the Lord touched uh, many other people. But let us go into the Word of God today and let us see what God is saying to us tonight, amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, which I believe you do, open it up at Deuteronomy 26, verse 8. There is two scriptures I'm going to bring to you today. In Deuteronomy 26, verse 8, and as you find your scripture, at the same time, please, I ask you to stand at the reading of the word. The Bible says this, and the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. And with great terribleness, and with signs and with wonders. 
One more time. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to go to Psalm 136, 11. At Psalm 136, verse 11, the Bible says this. And brought out Israel from among them. For his mercy endured forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. For his mercy endured it forever. Praise the name of Jesus. If you need a title for this message tonight, the title is simply this. The timely help of the mighty hand of God. The timely help of the mighty hand of God. Somebody say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Before we continue, I would like to welcome, praise God, Pastor Humphrey in our midst. God bless you, Pastor, to be here. Give him a clap. Amazing man of God, wrote many books about faith, and you're going to know him. He's an amazing man of God. Praise God. And also, of course, our own uh, Pastor Evan Morgan is here too, with the bass guitar and with his heart. Praise God. And also Minister Norby at the front. Minister Zoli in the back. He likes to be in the back now. Praise God. And Minister Nikki, who is translating for you. And of course, my wife, Pastor Vanessa in the back. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let us pray. Let us bow our hands. And let us ask the Lord to give us understanding. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to bring a light to your word. Bring a light to your precious word. Reveal to us in the name of Jesus all that we need to know today from your word that we may grow up into maturity in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and wonders the Lord had delivered Israel. The phrase with a strong hand and outstretched arm is described God's power or God's use of His power. Many times you would see in the Bible that the finger of God is the Holy Spirit. When we talk about creation, when we talk about God, we talk about that He revealed Himself in three persons. Even though God is one. God who is the source of everything, not the Father. Who is the source of everything. Before there was heaven and earth. Before there was universe. Before there was anything. There was God. He is the source of everything. And then you have Jesus Christ. His only begotten son. Who is the word of God. Who created all things. Because by him the Bible says. Everything was created. In this world. And then you have Holy Spirit. Who is the power of God. When God said at the beginning. Let there be light. We see that in verse 2 right away. That the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So we see that Holy Spirit is the power of God. Amen. With an outstretched arm. With a strong hand. God delivered. Israel. In Isaiah 60, 22, the Bible says this, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Now in the New Living Translation, when you read this scripture, it says that the smallest family will become a thousand people and the tiniest group will become 
a mighty nation. Now watch this. At the right time, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Praise the name of Jesus. Now watch this. God delivers with an ostrich arm, with a mighty hand. But He delivers in His own time. God comes always at the right time. Amen. When you came to the Lord, He came at the right time. When you needed His help, He came at the right time. How many of you can testify the goodness of the Lord? That when you needed God, He just came through at the right time. Because God does not live in time. He created time for His own purpose. He lives outside of time. Time does not control Him. God does not have to look at His watch. Because God is present in the past, present and future. Past exists because he is existing. Present exists because he is there. And future awaits for you because he is waiting for you there. Are you listening? So God at the right time will make it happen. A timely help from the mighty end of God. This is what we are talking about today. In Hosea 13 verse 9. In Hosea. 13 verse 9. The Bible says this. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Now, Hosea, the book of Hosea, is one of the books that deals with those people from Israel who came out from Babylon who came out from the captivity after the seven years has passed after God's judgment has finished and over here God is telling them that Israel you destroyed yourself how did Israel destroy his own self Israel destroyed his own self by disobeying God Israel failed by choosing idols instead of the living God. Israel failed because they chose other gods than the God of Israel and God judged them. But when this judgment was over, God gave them mercy and He gives them a great revelation. He said, Israel, you destroyed yourself. You disobeyed me. You turned to other gods, but in me, is dying now. This is very important part. God says to them, in me, there is help. Praise the name of Jesus. We're going somewhere with this. Now, let me tell you something very vital and important in my introduction to you. That when God created the heavens, He created it with His hands. When God created, He created also with His voice. Look at what Isaiah 48, 13 says. Now this is marvelous. Watch this. It was my hand that laid the foundations of the earth. When God created the foundations of the earth, He created with His hand. My right hand that spread out the heavens above. When I call out the stars, they all appear in order. God, when He spoke, the stars appeared. Can you imagine? God created with His hand. And when it comes to man, watch this. When it comes to man, because He called out the stars, can you imagine how big are the stars? He knows them by name, the Bible says. Every one of them. He knows them by name. They are huge stars. And God just spoke it up. But watch this. When God formed man, this is what God did. And the Lord God formed man 
of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Now watch this. Because this is marvelous. When God created the environment for man, he did not choose to speak man out from nothing. God chose to use the dust of the ground and he put his holy hand into the dust, into the dirt and he formed man. Why did God do that? Because God created a being that in a future time he wanted to be in intimate relationship with him. So when he created you and I with his hand, when he created Adam and Eve, right? When he created Adam. He created it with his hand. He touched dirt and he formed it with his hand. He could have spoken. God had the power to speak it forth. God had the power just to do this and you become and you're in front of him. But no, God take his time. God took his time. There were, there's another scripture that says that you are wonderfully and wonderfully made. God took his time. Fearfully and wonderfully were made in his hand. Why? Because God wanted to be intimate with you. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. We're going somewhere. Now watch this. In Isaiah 66, 1 and 2 says this. Thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where shall remain this house that you built unto me? Where shall remain this place of my rest? For all these things my hand has made. By my hand has these things has been, says the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. God created the heavens and the earth. God created you and I with his hand. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And God looks at those who are poor and of a contrite spirit and trembles at his word. Now this is a very important part here. God gives grace to the humble. He turns away from the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. In Psalm 46 verse 1, the Bible says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in, in the time of trouble. You know, there is a timely help from God that you can receive. How many of you are here today that you have a situation that you are praying for something and you need God's help? Lift up your hands. See, I'm preaching the right message. Oh, hallelujah. In Ezra 8.22-23, watch this. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because we had spoken to the king saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. Did you hear what the Bible says here now? Watch this. The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him. But his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So, what a, how you position yourself for God's help and God's protection? How do we position ourselves that we receive help, a timely help from the Lord? Number one, we must become a people of God who seeks Him. We must become a people of God who seeks Him. Amen. But many times, God's help is already there. 
We're just not able to see it because our faith is not in his word but in money or other things. You know when we need God's help and everybody needs God's help. I need his help every day. I need his help for prayer. I need his help for me to understand his word. I need his help to live Christian life. But the problem is if our faith is not in God but in other things. Many people have faith in money. If I have enough money, I have no problem. Right? If I have enough things in this world, there will be no sadness. If that will be true, then all those who are rich will be the happiest people on earth. But it's the opposite. Those who have everything and they don't have God, they have nothing. But you can be poor. The poorest of the poor. But if you have Jesus, you have everything. Hallelujah. So where is your heart? Where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? If you have faith in His Word and that what God promised you and you believe it and you receive it. But if you have faith in other things, if your last resort is God, then you don't have faith in God. When you go last, you know, you will... Something happens. You begin to try to solve it. You begin to try this. You begin to try that. And when nothing works, God, I need help. Right? Many times when people come to church, because there is trouble. Many times when people choose to come to church because they have trouble, because they tried everything, nothing worked. So they come to God. God wants to help us but we must put our faith in him and we must put him first amen because in God's mind you have to understand what is in God's mind in God's mind is always your elevation he wants to elevate you he wants to lift you up see God told Israel to come up higher into his presence on the Mount Sinai but they were afraid in Exodus 20 they were afraid they said to Moses, Moses, you go up for us. We're not going to go. We are afraid. But the invitation was to come up higher to the mountain was for the whole Israel. And this invitation is for all of his children today. God is inviting you and I to come up higher to seek him so that we can find help in times of trouble. Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what next hour holds. But if you put your faith in God, if you seek Him, no matter what tomorrow holds, you will find help in time of trouble. Amen? Now, the hand of God is also a symbol of God's guidance, instruction and discipline. The more we recognize the hand of God in our life, the better we will be able to follow His lead. Through the study of God's Word, a strong prayer life, an abiding trust in God, we can learn to recognize, trust and enjoy the hand of God moving in our lives. This is why in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your paths. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. How many of us truly trust in God? How many of us are truly trusting Him for our life? If you need help in time of trouble, you must trust Him. If you really want help from the Lord for anything in your life, you need to trust Him in His Word. In Isaiah 58, 55, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The problem is many times we don't understand God's ways. God's ways are completely different from yours. Many times we try to bring God down to our own level. And sometimes you must really go through dark times in order for you to reach the sunrise. Israel had to go through the desert before they reached the promised land. Movement of the hand of God is always becomes clear. When we already passed into the future from our trouble, by looking back, we realized that God's hand was guiding, protecting, and disciplining us. How many of you ever went through something in your life and you were following the Lord? But at that time, you did not know what season you are in. You did not know if you are in the wilderness. You did not know if you are in a testing time. Because maybe your level of understanding was not there for you to be able to discern if this storm is that I created. Is this storm that is in my life that God sent? Or this storm that the devil sent? What kind of a trouble am I in? And many times we get confused. But remember, when God wants to elevate you, when God wants to really bring you higher, He will allow you to go through testing. He will allow you to go through some hard situations. But we must understand what season we are in. Because we need help in a time of trouble. Amen? Amen? Now praise the Lord. Now watch this. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 the Bible says this. Therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now watch this. We see throughout the Bible that people who are humble in the Old Testament, they would call upon the Lord. And God's outstretched hand would reach out to them and save them and help them. Even we see examples, people who were not even in covenant with God. They were not covenant people, but they were outside of covenant. They were able to receive from Jesus by simply calling him Lord and humbling himself. We see examples in the Bible many times that God's hand was reached down because of compassion. Many times we see that. But what does the New Testament teach us now? Because there is a progress, progressive revelation. There is a revelation that we must understand that what God said in different ages it applies to different types of people, different ages. But what does God say now to us in the New Testament? And this is the part that we, you and I must understand. Now first, we must understand that the, you and I, we must become a new creation. Now what does that mean, new creation? You and I, we must become born again. You and I must be able to receive the Lord and be in Christ. Amen. What does it mean to be in Christ? It means that He is in us by the Holy Spirit and we are in Him by the Spirit of God. And when you are in Christ, there is a safety. When you are in Christ, there is a help. Now watch this. Let me show you something because there's something amazing with the hand of God. I want you to see by the scriptures your position in Christ. I want you to see now where you really are. How many of you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Lift up your hands. How many of you received Him already? And you believe that you are in Him and He is in you. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to notice, watch this. That when you are in Him, you are in His hand. Amen? You are in His hand. 
When you are in Christ, where are you? In His hand. In Habakkuk 3:4, the Bible says this: His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from His hand, and there His power was hidden. Did you hear that? The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, His power is hidden. And the Bible says that the power hidden in God's hand. And where is you and I? In a place of power. You are already in God's hand. You are already positioned for power. Because in His presence, you and I must live. Amen? You and I must live 24-7 in His presence. You and I must go into His presence and keep ourselves in His presence. This is why the Bible says in Psalm 91, right? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you and I constantly must live in the presence of God. Now watch this. We are in His hand and there is power hidden in His hand. In Luke 22, 16, the Bible says this. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. When the Bible says the right hand of the power of God, it talks about Jesus. Because the Bible says that the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Praise the Lord. In Gospel of John 14, 20, the Bible says that the day shall, you shall know that I am in the Father, you in me, and I in you. Did you hear what the Bible says? And that day you shall know that I am in the Father, you in me, and I in you. What does the right hand of God in Hebraic terms? It means that He has taken all authority and now He has become God's right hand. But what does it mean at that day? It implies that salvation. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when Jesus Christ is in you by His Spirit and you are in Him, at that day, at that day, praise the Lord, you shall know that I am in the Father, you in me, and I in you. So where are you? Where are you spiritually? If you truly believe it, you truly feel with the Spirit of God, you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Now watch this. In John 1.18, no one has seen God at any time. The only thing after the Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the heart of God. Did you hear that? Because it says that He is in the bosom of the Father. Because see, in heaven there is only one throne. There is no two thrones. There is one throne. So when you pray to the Father, you are praying to Jesus. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. So Jesus is back in the Father. He is in you by Holy Spirit. Where are we then? How close are you and I, according to the New Testament, are we to God? How close are we really to Him? Look at what John 10, 27 to 30 says. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Look at this, what Jesus says. 
In verse 28 he says, No one is able to snatch them out of his hand. Amen? Amen. Where are you? You're in his hand. You're in Christ, you are in his hand. Where is the hand of Jesus? In verse 29 he says, No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. This is marvelous. God created this universe with His hand. God formed you with His hand. The same hand that was pierced for you and I. With that same hand, He's holding your life. And the hand of Jesus is held by the Father's hand. And the Bible says in Habakkuk that in his hand there is power. So there is an outstretched hand of God in your life available right now. When does, the when does God help you? When is the time that is placed according to this? He placed in the past or placed in the future no in placed in the present in now now is the time when God is available to help you now is the time when God is a present crowd in the time of trouble now is the time not tomorrow not five minutes later it is now everybody say now now why? Because right now you are in His hand. Right now you are in Christ. Right now you are seated in heavenly places. Look at what Ephesians 2 says. 2, 6. Ephesians 2 6 says, And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now we could stay in this verse for the whole day. Because that's a place of authority. That's a place that was for the only begotten Son of God. But this place is also for you and I. We are seated with Him in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 3.22 says this, Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, Angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to Him. Did you hear that? Who has gone into heaven? And is it at the right hand of God? Angels, authorities and powers having been made subject to Him. If you are in Christ, you are in His hand. And the hand of the Lord is in the Father's hand. And you're in a place of authority. Then your position in Christ, there is, a, there is a help in a time of trouble. There is a help right away. Anytime when you cry out, Lord, I need your help now. He's right there. Because you are, He's in you by the Holy Spirit. You are in Him. And the moment you reach out by faith to Him, He's there. Amen? Oh, praise the name of Jesus. This is why you and I must humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. In 1 Peter 5, 6-8, because of this position, because of this high price that He paid for you and I, you know He paid with His own blood for you to be in Christ, for you to be in the protection of the hand of God. You and I must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. 1 Peter 5, 6 to 8 says this, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom He may devour. See, the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you. 
So, when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, when we understand our position in Christ, and we truly walk with the Lord, then we can cast all of our care upon Him. Because that's the next verse. He says we can cast all of our cares upon Him because He cares for you and I. But He said right next to that, He said, but be sober, be vigilant, because the adversary of the devil as Lord in line walk about seeking whom He may devour. Whom he may devour. Which means that he cannot devour just anybody. He cannot just attack anybody. Because there is a great protection over your life. You have to understand you are in the hand of God. You are in the hand of the Jesus. And the hand of Jesus is in the hand of the Father. And you are in Christ seated in heavenly places. Which means nothing can happen to you unless God allows you. Look at Job. In Job's life, because see, God wanted to bless him double. God said to Satan, Do you see my servant Job? Because God was bragging about him. God was saying, Look at my servant. Look at how faithful he is. Look at how righteous he is living. Why did God did that? Because he wanted to bless Job double. But then the enemy said something amazing. Watch this. This is outside of covenant. There was no covenant yet made. No covenant. There was no new covenant. There was no promises. What is what Job said? What the enemy said? There is a hedge around him. I can do anything. And God said, You can do this and this to him, but you cannot kill him. Which means that the enemy had to obey God. He could not just attack somebody without permission. Are you listening? To if you say that the devil is bothering me, there are things that is happening to me. Well, if God allowed it, He allowed it for a reason. He might want to teach you something. He might want you to make you a strong soldier. Or you might open up a door. Because see, if you open up a door to the demonic, God is not responsible. And there are different doors that the demonic can open. There are different sins, rebellion, false doctrine, false teachings. There are many different things that you can open up. So be careful at the same time. That when you catch yourself sinning, you repent right away. Because you don't want to give space to the devil. Amen. But look at in Job's place. He could not do nothing because there was a hedge around him. If that was true with Job. Then how much more with your life? That God is a present help. In a time of trouble. God is a timely help. And he can help you right away. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we stand? Hallelujah. I know it's very hot in here. We're trying to work on this. Hallelujah. In Acts 4.29, when the disciples came together, because there was persecution in the church. The Bible says that they came together in prayer. And they inquired the Lord. That he may outstretch his arm. For healing. For deliverance. For signs and wonders. In Acts 4.29 the Bible says this. Now Lord. Look on their threats. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. 
by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus praise the name of Jesus why is this important because I believe when we begin to pray when we come together and begin to pray and ask the Lord to outstretch His arm, then He will begin to heal and He will begin to do signs and wonders. Why? Because see, you are in His hand. By the way, you are His hand in this world. You are His feet in this world. You are His voice in this world. And God wants to heal through you. God wants to deliver through you. God wants to save through you. God wants to do His work through your life. Amen. Now how many of you here today that you never received the Lord Jesus Christ? You never said publicly yes to Him. You never proclaimed Him as Lord and Savior before people. If that's you and you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then this is the time. And you can come now and we will pray for you. Is anybody here today that you never publicly proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Or you never said a prayer to receive Jesus Christ? Everybody is saved here today? Everybody receive the Lord. Hallelujah. If everybody, everybody is saved, everybody receive the Lord. And it's great. Then I'm gonna make another invitation in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Give him a clap. Praise the Lord. Is anybody else that you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Is anybody else here today? that you want to give your life to the Lord today. Hallelujah. He's coming back very soon. And you know, when the Lord was on the cross, He publicly died for you on the cross. He publicly bare the shame on the cross for you. Now if He did that for you and I, then we need to also do it for Him. Amen. And Jesus said it like this way. Right? That if you ashamed of me before people, I'm going to be ashamed of you in heaven. So you don't want the Lord to be ashamed of you, right? In heaven. So anybody asks, my last call, never receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you need the saving grace of the Lord, then you can come now in Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. Now if there is anybody here that you need a timely help of the mighty hand of God, you need a help for your situation, there are things that you are praying for that you haven't seen come forward yet and you want to bring it before the Lord we want to come into agreement with your prayer and we want to help you we want to pray for you if there is anybody here that you need the prayer of the Lord that you are also invited okay and we're going to worship the Lord at that time praise the Lord hallelujah is anybody here you need the Lord's help today? You can come forward and pray for you. Okay? Now let's pray, my brother. Okay? Lift up your hands. Let us pray together this amazing prayer. So I ask you to please pray this prayer, okay? And say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne of grace. And I ask you, Lord, forgive me for all of my sin. I give you my life. And wash me with your precious blood. And I ask you, Lord, 
Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Bring your light into my darkness. And save me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can you go to the next Nikki or next? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to give a big give, give, uh, clap for him. Praise the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for his life. And I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless him. Use him for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the name. One more clap to him. Praise the name of Jesus. Please stand here. Just come stand here over here. And I want you to lift up your hands to the Lord. And let us worship the Lord. Anybody else you need prayer, come now. Thank you. Go next, please. And put on some more volume. Let us begin to worship the Lord and we're going to ask the Lord. That's what to be a release of the supernatural. Right now. The Holy Spirit is about to move in this place like never before. The power of God is about to touch you like never before. The power of God is about to heal you like never before. Oh, the Wherever you are, just lift up your voice and just lose the name of Jesus right now. Let the name of Jesus Lord, you see my situation. 
Lord, you know what I'm praying for. Lord, I believe that you are a present help in time of trouble. I cry out to you today and I ask you, Lord, forgive me to putting my hands into this situation. I take it off and I ask you, Lord, to outstretch your hand into this situation in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, to bring healing, deliverance, restoration, resolution into my situation in the name of Jesus.
There's a few of you here today. I keep hearing it in my spirit. There's a few of you here that you have an immigration problem. That you need God's grace for immigration. Who is here? You need immigration from lift up your hands and begin to wave it to me. Is anybody here that you are praying for immigration? Come, come. Come forward. He, he, he still needs it, right? Too. Okay, praise God. Lord, Nikki, go next. Lord, you're above immigration. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray right in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, give them the paper in the name of Jesus by your mercy and your grace. I pray, Lord, give them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, thank you. Holy Ghost, thank you. Watch, 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 watch. Lord, you always watch. Is anybody here that you need an immigration problem? You too. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for faith, supernatural favor, supernatural favor. Nikki, translate. Supernatural favor in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Supernatural favor. Lord, I pray for favor, supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural favor in the name of Jesus. Lamorena de que so you need to know what's happening. Nikki translate. And last week they came to us. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for their life, Lord. I pray to bless them. Bless them, Lord, financially. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, bless them, Lord, physically and spiritually. In the mighty name of Jesus. By your mercy and your grace. 
fill them with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. By your mercy, Lord, I see my soul. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Completely. Completely, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody worship the Lord. That is in my time. Everything is in my time. In my time you will receive. In my time you will get it. In my time, the Lord says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait. There is an appointed time in the Lord's hand where everything will come together for you. Wait on the Lord. And the Lord will answer that prayer. Will answer that request. God sees your heart cry. God sees your pain. God sees everything and God knows about everything. God knows your sacrifice and God did not forget you. Ah, this is what I hear in my spirit. But it's not for you. God sees. God sees. Holy Ghost. Now, now, now. Go re be 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 shete re bo so ko toro do bo so to re ba sakata. Riga sekete. In the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, out. Go be ba 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 sakate. In the name of Jesus. Completely. Go re ba ba sak. Completely in the name of Jesus. Every dark spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rogo Siki Miki Sheterebosso, completely, oh, silently in Jesus' name. Silently in the name of Jesus. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. Rega Marabasukoto. See, the fire of the Lord is burning out things out of you that you picked up in certain churches. You went to some places, yes. You went to some places and you picked up things that you were not supposed to pick up. But God delivers you now. Today, He is delivering you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you. Today is a day of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Every spirit, every transfer spirit in the name of Jesus. Out! Now and never come back in Jesus' name. Go back to the pit of you came from in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I want some ministers to begin to pray. Begin to pray, speaking in tongues. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear, I bind you, command you, out, now, in Jesus' name. Never come back. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, completely, completely, completely. completely. Somebody bring me something. Somebody bring me something. 
Bring me something quickly. Ora ba 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 sa. I baragasa te ne bosuto. I baragasa te ne bosuto te ne bosuto. Somebody bring me something quickly. Bring it, bring it. Ora ba 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 sa. Get to the bosuto. I ba 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 sa. Today you're gonna be delivered completely in Jesus' name. Look at my eyes. Look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. No, you gonna come out. I said you're gonna come out. Every witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Out now. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. Every one of you. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every one of you. One by one, one by one, one by one, one after the other. Rabo shekete sete. Now, 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 in Jesus' name. No more, no more. Eba sheketu raba sekete. Ibledi de mondo lo kusotoi. Robo bobo shekete. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Maro jeku ba burada sekete de. Ra, every dark spirit, every dark from your childhood even, every dark spirit from your childhood, every dark spirit from your childhood, I said out in Jesus' name. No more, no more. Every tormenting spirit, every unclean spirit, out in Jesus' name. No more. You have no authority here. By the blood of Jesus. Out, 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 now! No more! No more! Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's over. Look at me now. It's over. How do you feel? Feel much better. It's over. It's over. Come sit down here. Come sit down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation, healing, and deliverance. Amen. Nikki, go next song, please. Kobari and Daragojete. Mi breve beke setolo monjara desatai. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. How wonderful is our Lord our God. How wonderful our Lord our God. Come. Come. You need a fresh, fresh touch from the Lord. You need boldness. Ah, I see. You're asking the Lord for boldness. I hear in my spirit the Lord saying, Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His mercy. Boldness and might is imparted to you now in Jesus' name. The boldness you've been praying for, the boldness you've been asking for, to testify, to testify, to testify, to testify, to become a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a fresh touch from the Lord for your life. More, 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 more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's boldness coming to you. 
See, everything you know, God will bring it up into remembrance. Okay, no, no, the Holy Spirit will bring it up for you. At the right time when you need to speak it. At the right time when you need to say it. God says, do not fear when you have to say for your name. When you have to preach for your name. You don't, you, you don't fear. Step out in faith and God says, I'm going to feel it. This is the word for you. Then when you step out in faith, you're just going to know what to say. You're just going to know what to do. You're just going to know the right scriptures. You're just going to know the right words to articulate. To speak boldly and testifying. It's coming, It's coming. When is not the question? When are you willing? Lift up your hands and say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. That's all it takes. Now you go and do it. Now you go and do it. That's all it takes. God was waiting for you. God was waiting for you. Just go with Him. Just go, just go, just go and do it. Do it. Receive it. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. There's more coming, yes? Yes, there's more coming for you. Yes, there is There is more coming for your life. Yes, there is more coming. You have a desire to even heal the sick. You have a desire to heal the sick. 